Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is uh, February 12th, 2024, and um, this video, I have three titles, but the one I'm going to use for this is The Son of Perdition is Now Revealed. The Son of Perdition is Now Revealed. That is also translated the Son of Destruction in a lot of Bibles. Uh, Judas, as you remember, was called the son of perdition by Jesus in John chapter 17. Um, <clears throat> in John 17, Jesus said in verse 12, While I was with them, with my disciples, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of them has been lost except the son of perdition. You know, I teach the restoration of all things. The Bible teaches that Jesus brings salvation to all men. Um, Paul taught in the book of Romans, um, no, the book of 1 uh, Corinthians, chapter 15. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. But yet, Jesus makes it clear that does not include the son of perdition, the son of destruction. What is that? Who is that? What does that mean? Well, we're going to find out today. Uh, before we get into it, I want to apologize for my voice, and if I cough, I am in my third bout of um, COVID. Um, first time was in beginning of December 2021. Second time, uh, beginning of December 2022, and this one began almost three weeks ago, and I'm still struggling to get out of it. Uh, this has been a very peculiar two and a half years for me because it's been a time of intense personal suffering with health issues. The initial COVID turned into long COVID in February of 2022. Uh, I suffered um, heart attack symptoms, stroke symptoms. Of course, I never took the vaccination, but yet uh, whatever this thing is, it uh, changed my life, changed my health, and uh, <clears throat> I've been struggling with it for two and a half years. I'm going to be starting with uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Um, the English Standard Version uses the term the son of destruction. The King James Version uses the term the son of perdition. They both mean the same thing. <clears throat> so let's read uh, this whole passage first, and then I will make some explanations. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come, that day will not come, unless <clears throat> the rebellion, that's the word apostasy, which means a divorcement or a stepping away from a state of being. Unless that rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. So the man of lawlessness is the son of destruction. The man of lawlessness is the son of perdition. The son of perdition is a lawless man. He does not obey God. He does not obey the law. He finds the law to be legalistic. You ever heard that term? <clears throat> and he says in verse 4, The son of perdition opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Most people think there's going to be a, sec a third temple built in Jerusalem, and that's where he's going to proclaim himself 
to be God. That is totally false. This is talking, <clears throat> the temple of God is us. It is our inner man. <clears throat> the temple of God is where God is to reside within us. He gives us the Holy Spirit when we first believe in Jesus. But once we believe in Jesus, then the Lord allows tempting spirits to come to us in order to deceive us so that this man of lawlessness, this son of perdition, will take his seat in our temple rather than the true God, rather than Jesus himself. So he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know what's restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned, who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So all will be condemned who did not believe the truth. Instead, they chose pleasure in unrighteousness. They chose unrighteous pleasures rather than following the truth. Now I want to show you a very interesting thing in verse 1 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him. I want to focus on that phrase. First of all, I'm going to Esword right now, which takes me to Strong's Concordance. <clears throat> and in 2 Thessalonians 2.1, this word coming is the word perusia, the Greek word perusia, and it most people call that the rapture. So people think that this is talking about the rapture, and it refers, they think, to all Christians. They're wrong. It does not. It talks about the coming of the Lord in the air for the Kodeshim, for the man-child, for the overcomers. Also in <clears throat> the same verse, verse 1 of 2 Thessalonians 2, it has the word gathering together. In the uh, King James, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming, by the perusia of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. The word gathering together is the word episanugogi. Episanugogi. It occurs only one other time in Scripture. And it means an assembling or a complete collection. So it's a, a complete group of a particular group of people, the ones that Paul is referring to here. And it does not talk about all people who say they are Christians. The other place that this word occurs is in one of the most uh, poorly translated verses in the Bible, which is... Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And in the King James, it says, well, first, let me read a little more than just that verse. So I'll go back to my English Standard Version, which is open here. <clears throat> and start with verse 23. And read 23, 24, 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Well, what is that? That's our confession of hope in Jesus Christ. We speak. To confess Christ means to speak the same thing as Christ. It means that we don't contradict him. 
Our churches today contradict Christ all the time because they don't teach the truth. Verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What day? The day of Christ. The day of the return of Christ. But it's worded, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, like, you mean not neglecting to go to church? Not, ne- not neglecting to go to your, your charismatic, your Baptist, your Catholic, your Methodist church? Don't neglect that, or you might miss it. No, no, no. This word here is epistinugogi. It's only the second time that it's used in the, in the whole New Testament. It's only used twice. And it's referring to the very same thing that 2 Thessalonians is talking about. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him has nothing to do with going to church. It has to do with being gathered together to Christ in the air. And that's what the writer of Hebrews is talking about. Don't neglect this teaching about meeting the Lord Jesus in the air. Who's going to do that? Only the man-child, only the overcomers. But yet we're taught it's the whole church. So this is critical for understanding what Paul is even talking about in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He is dealing with the Episnugogi. He's talking about the coming of the Lord in the air. That's the perusia, not the general rapture that everybody is hoping for. And he's saying this. <clears throat> he says, verse 3, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion, the apostasy, the falling away from truth comes first. And the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, is revealed. That day cannot come until the son of perdition is revealed. And I am telling you today, the son of perdition has been revealed. Listen. Listen. We are at the end. I've been speaking this for years. I've been telling you this for years. And no one listens. And now we're there. You see the world falling apart. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Nothing is the same. It's never going back. The world is coming down. The kingdom of this world is coming down. And that's what I'm talking about today. And you need to hear because the prophets are beginning to speak. And the false prophets have been exposed. And they will continue to be exposed. And specifically, I mean false prophets like Mike Bickle. Rick Joyner, Paul Kane, Bob Jones, and I could name so many more. Now there's another name used for the son of perdition or the son of destruction, and that is the abomination of desolation. So go to uh, Matthew chapter 24. This is Jesus speaking, verse 15. He says, So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Let the reader understand. When you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. Now, what did 2 Thessalonians say? chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come. The perusia, the coming of the Lord, and the epizanugogi, the gathering together to him in the air, that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, what did Jesus just say here in Matthew 24? 
<clears throat> so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, well, everybody thinks he's talking about a physical temple. The holy place is our holy place. The holy place is our inner temple, our inner man. He's talking about the same thing. So we have a new phrase, a new term for the son of perdition, and that term is the abomination of desolation. <clears throat> well, a couple of mornings ago, I, was <clears throat> I wrote uh, a short definition for the abomination of desolation. The man of lawlessness is all of mankind except for the elect and chosen man-child overcomers. The man of lawless, na lawlessness now stands in the holy place, the holy place of man's heart, and proclaims that he, <clears throat> that he, man himself, in place of Christ, is God. Well, what's the word the Bible uses for to stand in the place of Christ? The Antichrist. So there's our third word then. The abomination of desolation is the Antichrist. The abomination of desolation is the man of perdition, the man of destruction. This has never occurred in history before and is the sure sign that the second coming of Christ is at hand. The second coming of Christ is at hand because the sign has occurred. The abomination of desolation has been revealed. Well, how has it been revealed? <clears throat> we do not look for one Antichrist figure to arise. Everybody's looking for one Antichrist, the son of Satan. Well, don't you know that practically everyone in the world is a son of Satan? What did Jesus say the Jews were? You are of your father, the devil. They were sons of Satan. They could not hear him. People today cannot hear Christ. The church cannot hear Christ. And then anyone who's not in the church, they don't even know Christ, so they can't hear Christ. Well, a few people actually do hear Christ, but they don't know it's Christ that they hear. <clears throat> what we see today is the corporate Antichrist, the abomination of desolation, ruling in the hearts of men in every aspect of man's life. And the three main areas, number one, religion. Religion, the false prophet of Revelation 13, it includes all of churchianity and all other religions. Politics, that's the beast that rises out of the sea that uh, the harlot rides on in uh, Revelation chapter 17, and of course, economics. The Bible calls this corporate antichrist, this corporate abomination of desolation, this corporate son of perdition, the Bible calls that the kingdom of this world in Revelation 11 verse 15. It also refers to it as Babylon the Great. So Babylon the Great is a word used by God to refer to the kingdom of the world. John tells us, warns us over and over, do not love the world or the things of the world. Why? Because the world is satanic. The world is run by the spirit of Satan. The Bible calls Satan, the ruler of this world. And Babylon the Great is mentioned in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different verses in Revelation. Let's look at those and then we'll end this video after this. And this looks like it's going to be continued to several in the series because I have not gotten very far through my list. So Revelation 14.8 Another angel, a second one, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She who made all nations, 
all nations, the entire world, everyone. She who made everyone drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. What happened with Mike Bickle? Was there some sexual immorality? Were there other things? Were there false prophecies? Was he using prophecy in order to seduce young women? That's what we hear. That's what the testimony has been. Revelation chapter 16, 19. The great city was split into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. It is in three parts. Religion, politics, economics. Revelation 17, 5. And on her forehead, the harlot, introduced in Revelation 17, on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations, the abomination of desolation. Revelation 18.1, After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place of demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. Revelation 18.10 The merchants of the earth will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour, your judgment has come. Prophet Ken Vischer says, Babylon will fall in one literal, literal hour. When it begins to fall, it will fall quickly. Revelation 18.21 Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. <clears throat> the abomination of desolation has been revealed. The man of lawlessness has been revealed. The man of perdition has been revealed. The man of destruction has been revealed. What is it? It's our sinful nature. We are born with the sinful nature we inherited from Adam. But when we are born again, when we believe in Jesus, we have a choice. Will we begin to follow Jesus? Will we begin to obey Jesus in faith? It's called the obedience of the faith in Romans chapter 1, verse 5 by Paul. And then he ends the book of Romans with the same phrase. The obedience of faith. All of Romans is about the obedience of faith. Will you be led of the Spirit? Or will you be led of the flesh? Will you be led of the holiness of God? Or will you be led of the sins of your flesh? You have that choice. And the world has chosen to be led of their flesh, including the entire church. The abomination of desolation is revealed. Jesus is about to to come. He is about to appear and you need to hear. You need to understand what is about to happen.